The current mass extinction event is the most severe in planetary history. It will almost certainly cause the extinction of all life on Earth. Its cause is well known, the collective actions of too many humans for too long a time, primarily through burning fossil fuels. However, the causes of previous mass extinction events remain unknown. Of particular interest in the scientific community is the worst of the previous mass extinction events, the End Permian event. It has long been believed that massive volcanic eruptions triggered this event in what is now Siberia by spewing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, thus warming Earth. New research indicates otherwise. According to a paper in the renowned peer-reviewed journal Science, the end Permian mass extinction event was underlain by a huge El Nino Southern Oscillation event. According to the title of a paper published in Science on September 12, 2024, Mega El Nino instigated the end Permian mass extinction. Eight scholars wrote this paper. According to the editor's summary, a self-reinforcing feedback loop involving El Nino Southern Oscillation events, deforestation, the demise of coral reefs, and a plankton crisis caused an increasingly warmer climate and still stronger El Nino Southern Oscillation events. This rare event has not been documented to have occurred at any other time. The peer-reviewed paper in Science is not open access. Fortunately, the abstract of the peer-reviewed paper tells the story. Quote, the ultimate driver of the end Permian mass extinction is a topic of much debate. Here we used a multi-proxy and paleoclimate modeling approach to establish a unifying theory elucidating the heightened susceptibility of the Pangean world to the prolonged and intensified El Nino events leading to an extinction state. As atmospheric par partial pressure of carbon dioxide doubled from about 410 to about 860 parts per million in the late Permian, the myriadional overturning circulation collapsed, the Hadley cell contracted, and El Nino Southern Oscillation events intensified. The resultant deforestation, reef demise, and plankton crisis marked the start of a cascading environmental disaster. Reduced carbon sequestration initiated positive feedback, producing a warmer hothouse and consequently stronger El Ninos. The compounding effects of elevated climate variability and mean state warming led to catastrophic but diachronous terrestrial and marine losses. End quote. In other words, multiple El Nino Southern Oscillation events combined with a warming planet resulting from high levels of atmospheric carbon dioxide triggered a series of catastrophes. These led to abrupt warming in both terrestrial and marine systems. The result was a mass extinction event more severe than any other until the Anthropocene. As stated in the editor's summary, the end Permian mass extinction event differed from other mass extinction events due to a combination of extreme El Nino events and an overheated earth that led directly to deforestation, the demise of coral reefs, and a reduction in plankton. These factors combined to cause simultaneous warming of marine and terrestrial ecosystems. According to a news article published in Science coincident with the release of the peer-reviewed paper, the so-called Great Dying was primed by the aforementioned extreme El Nino Southern Oscillation events. However, the resulting weather extremes destroyed forests and otherwise amplified the impact of weather patterns. This combination of events caused a rapid, simultaneous warming of land and sea. As I have mentioned previously in this space, this, the rate of environmental change is tremendously important to the continued existence of species, populations, and communities. A related paper was published in Science on September 20, 2024, titled A 45 Million History of Earth's Surface Temperature. This paper was written by seven scholars. Information from an editor's summary provides a good overview of the peer-reviewed paper. Quote, Understanding how global mean surface temperature has varied over the past half billion years, a time in which evolutionary patterns of flora and fauna have had such an important influence on the evolution of climate, is essential for understanding the processes driving climate over that interval. The authors present a record of global mean surface temperature over the past 485 million years that they constructed by combining proxy data with climate modeling. 
They found that global mean surface temperature varied over a range from 11 degrees to 36 degrees C, with an apparent climate sensitivity of about 8 degrees C, about two to three times what it is today. End quote. An article in Smithsonian Magazine released the day before the peer-reviewed paper was published in Science provides an easily read, detailed description of the information in the peer-reviewed paper. The article is titled, In a Landmark Study, Scientists Discover Just How Much Earth's Temperature Has Changed Over Nearly 500 Million Years. Here's the subhead, quote, Researchers show the average surface temperature on our planet has shifted between 51.8 to 96.8 degrees Fahrenheit, end quote. That's 11C to 36C. The article in Smithsonian Magazine includes a quote from a paleoclimatologist, quote, The rate of climate change plays a pivotal role in ecological outcomes. Earth's ability to endure dramatic temperature shifts does not guarantee the same for human societies. Earth's resilience does not directly translate to our own ability to adapt and thrive in the face of human-caused climate change. End quote. This haunting quote sounds as if it is coming from an ecologist. Apparently, this paleoclimatologist is familiar with the importance of the rate of environmental change in assuring the continued existence of ecological entities. The final paragraph of the article in Smithsonian Magazine presents a warning. Quote, the record created by the scholars in the new study takes us to the present moment. The next decade will be crucial in shaping Earth's climate. The United Nations reminded us all last year, advising that nations the world over cut their reliance on fossil fuels and invest in new science that may draw carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. No single best solution exists. Earth is at a point where any and every possible action to curtail human-caused warming is essential. What happens next is up to us. End quote. The conclusion that we have control over the global climate is naive and not surprising. Corporate media outlets continue to call on the masses to reduce the use of fossil fuels. In addition, appealing to the quote, next decade end quote, as quote, crucial in shaping Earth's climate end quote, is the same line corporate media outlets, government officials, and paid climate scientists have been spouting for decades. As even the Design to Fail Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change concluded more than five years ago, Earth is amid abrupt, irreversible climate change. I've quoted from the 2007 film No Country for Old Men before. Specifically, I've quoted Gar Barry Corbin in the role of Ellis. I'm sure I'll quote him again. Quote, You can't stop what's coming. It ain't all waiting on you. That's vanity. End quote. As much as I wish otherwise, you can't stop abrupt, irreversible climate change. Nobody can. Acceptance is a gift. Please, give it to yourself.